The last repair on the Defender didn't hold. So I've had to spend the big money and buy one of these. So hopefully this will do the trick. Let's find out. Right, let's get the wheel off. Yeah, so basically the last fix I did with a round disc and sandpaper didn't fix it this time. It's fixed it in the past. Sadly, not this time. So I've had to spend the big bucks. Hey? It was about £180 plus shipping to get the fuel filter assembly to me, which is a bit annoying to say the least. There's a lot of money to pay out. Nevertheless, got to be done. It's an OEM part. Uh, it, I'm assuming other people don't make them, otherwise it'd be a lot cheaper than that. Um, but apparently, what Land Rover fit? Made in China, of course, like everything seems to be now. But let's get it off. I can't see a lot of point in starting the engine to show the fuel leaking because it's tucked right up at the back. I can show you about where it's coming from. Let me just uh, get the wheel off. This little jig I made a while ago, hang on, one more nut. Uh, this little jig, this little jig I made a few years ago, really quite good. Don't lift the truck up, but supports a wheel. So you can easily maneuver it out the way. Also, refitting is really good. Um, as you ain't got a man handle a wheel, it almost slots straight into place. Right, we're going into the dark depths underneath here. Let's see. Get the cover off. Right, basically, fuel filter, fuel filter housing. I've got the whole unit. When you buy the OEM, you get the filter, you get the water sensor at the bottom if your truck has it. Um, the four little spigots that come out the side and in inside behind the spigots on one side, um, I think it's a non-return valve and the other side is, um, an air, I'm going to say air release valve, but it is air bleed valve, I think the expression. But it looks to me that the casting's actually cracked right up under the back here. So very difficult to show you. But what I'm going to do, strip this off, put a new one on, then we'll have a little bit of an autopsy of the old one and see what's happened. But yeah, that's what I've got to do now. Uh, drain some diesel off. I'm going to put a, a bowl down on the floor here like I usually do, just to catch a diesel. But I'm going to reuse the oil filter, the fuel filter, because it was only put on about a week ago, so there shouldn't be anything wrong with that. I don't want to waste money. So yeah, all right, let's, uh, let's get to work. It's four pipes going on to the fuel assembly. Mine are tied on with tie wraps because there's a couple of them don't hold themselves on. But basically I'm gonna cut the tie wrap off. The next thing on mine, I've got a water monitor valve, if you wanna call it that, water sensor. So I'm not gonna take that off because I've got fuel in here. I'm gonna hang on to that. But I am going to unscrew it and probably make a mess. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Normally I'd undo the base from it to drain the fuel out of it. Today I'm not. was well, brand new filter when it went on. It's only really from then I started having these diesel issues at the back here. But looking at what's happened, the casting seems to have cracked, certainly from underneath, it would appear. So I've done the best to uh, give a good surface for the filter to actually mate with. So assuming that's okay, and the filter's okay, there's something else going on. So. There's a fuel filter out with the expensive diesel. So I'm going to put that over to one side, somewhere where it's safe. These are just tie wraps you wouldn't normally have on. They're coming off.
I'll give these fairly good clean so hopefully there's going to be no contamination when I refit the new unit. A bit mucky inside though. I'll just go in with brake cleaner equivalent. Let's see if we can clean them up a tad. Clearly there's four pipes, I'm not going to mark them all up, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to swap them around, which wouldn't go down well. You've got two clips, one either side of the union there. The idea is you squeeze that together and the pipe should pop off. Now this is where I am going to block your view. Now that's M2. It looks as if you push the pipe on, squeeze the two bits together. I'll show you, I've got some new ones, I'll show you off uh, in a minute when I'm back in the garage. But uh, yeah, push the pipe on, squeeze the two bits together, and it seems to come cleanly off then. It's just rubber ID cap, so I'm giving these a bit of a clean. I'm sure somewhere they're color coded and they tell you what they mean. I'm hoping I don't have any problems uh, with these connectors. I have got some, but I noticed two are right angles and I ain't got them. Right, let's get the old filter head off. One, is that actually broken on one side? It's got kind of two lugs. And one of them is lugless. Happened before my time. Let's get that in shot. There's the old piece. Now, if I find the crack, yeah, get that on shot. I'm afraid you're not going to see that in here. But let's get this on the bench and take a look. Right, here's the old unit, pretty obvious, and there's the new one. Now, you've got inlet and outlet ports. And going by, look, I'm looking at the new one now because there's so much dirt on here. This pointed in, this is out. This is in, that's out. Now, I could just refit this, which, which is my intention. I'm gonna put this back in now. But within this unit, there's also um, an air release valve, air bleed valve, and a one-way valve. Now, various reports on the internet have shown those have come swap round, even if it's on a brand new unit. Now, on this brand new unit that's turned up, unadulterated. If I unscrew this, you should see the air bleed valve. You can buy those separately, that's about a tenner. The brass unit here is £36 each. The washer, copper washer, is about £3 each. All right, so you can work that out for yourself. You've got four of these at £36 each. £10 for an air bleed valve. And in this one is the one-way valve. You can get a repair repair kit. That's £23. So I'll put them back in exactly as they were supplied from the Chinese factory. What I'm going to do is dismantle this thing to make sure those are in the same position. If not, I'm going to move these around on this unit to the same as this, because this has worked for five years. One thing you also get with the 180 pound unit is, and I'm gonna pronounce it wrong, a Mao, Mao oil filter. 
I buy the branded, the, the, the marked up good quality filters. You can get Britpart, I'm not saying they're bad, but I'd rather get a, a name brand. This is also made in China, but I'm gonna, off the top of my head, I think they're about 12 pound each. You've got the water sensor on the bottom here. I don't know the price, but let's pretend that's 20. So you start adding all them up together, you ain't far short of 180 pound. You are, but it, it, you bought all the parts separately, you'd probably be looking. You can't buy the head separately. You can buy all the other bits and bobs, and that's probably going to be under £120 by the time you got it delivered. So I can't quite justify by saying I've only paid £60 for the aluminium head, because that's not true. But I do have some spares if I'm ever going to need them. But like I say, I'm going to dismantle this. I'll do this off shot. I'll dismantle this, make sure I've got the air bleed valve and the one-way valve the right way round. If I have, you'll see me refitting this in a few minutes. Right, just prior to me fitting this back into the vehicle, I've took those uh, valves out and had a look and can confirm they're the same, both old and new. So here I have the air bleed valve fitted and here the one-way valve fitted. When I add in the vise, take it to pieces, that crack I was telling you about, well, it's developed into more than a crack. There's a big lump fell off it. Now, you can see the surface I've been cleaning in the previous video. And what I could see from under the vehicle was a little line. It now turned out to be a big line. And that's where the fuel was leaking out. So, either the surface was cracked on the top that I've machined down, shall we say, or there's an internal crack down in the depths of the device here where the fuel was coming from which I suspect possibly was more likely because a lot of dirt and grime in here yeah it looks there a semi cleaner surface so I reckon when I fitted the oil uh, the fuel filter that probably finished it off and there was enough movement in that to start it leaking so it was about time it got changed so uh, that's what I'm going to do now let's put the new one back on get it sorted I really am going to fit it now, but I just wanted to point out the surface where the old fuel filter used to rest, the rubber used to rest on this area. You can see where it's shiny. Well, this isn't. There's um, two grooves, two raised grooves, which presumably will sit quite well with the rubber. Now, whether they used to come like this originally machined down or whether somebody else has done the same thing as me and machined it down bit by bit, over time I couldn't tell you but this one doesn't have a machine surface so in some respects the aluminium is protected from the elements because it's painted which will probably peel off within six months but nevertheless right we're definitely going to fit this now right there you go all buttoned up and no leaks I'm pleased to say so hopefully that's going to be the last of the fuel leaking issue around this area £180 genuine part should be a good one. Anyhow, thanks for watching Mike Makes, sir.